Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to airbrush this quick green real fire on a canvas. So let's go get into it right now. Now that I've sprayed my canvas with some Trident Black, you can use any water-based black. I'm using dark green and I'm just going to sketch out the first layer of my flames. So you can see I'm fogging that in. I'm not being super detailed at this point. I just want to get the flow and the shape of the actual fire that I'm going to be creating. And I'm switching between doing most of it freehand, but also using my freehand art tool templates. In this case, the Mike Lavalli second degree burn template series. Uh, just to get some of my harsh edges in there as well. So at this stage, uh, for your first layer, you really want to concentrate on getting that initial flow. Remember if you don't like all of it, you can still always switch back to black and eliminate it. Use black as pretty much your eraser and just uh, delete anything that you don't want. But generally this is layer one, so it's not super crucial at this stage. You're going to build more layers on top of it, so you can kind of tweak it more as the layers continue. Okay, so now I've got white in my airbrush and I'm going to create another layer of flame on top of the previous one that we've just completed. I'm not following the previous layer exactly, so I'm using it as a bit of a guide, but essentially I'm just creating a new layer on top of the previous one. Again, I'm utilizing my template as well as lots of freehand. However, with this layer I'm starting to get a bit sharper now. So just a bit more defined than the previous one. And I'm also trying to keep all my like embers and my fire as tight as possible. You'll notice that in some areas I'm applying quite a bit more white just to um, get a bit more opacity and what that's going to do is going to give me a brighter base so that when the next uh, colour goes over this particular layer it's just going to be a little bit brighter. Okay so now I'm switching back to my dark green. And now that I've completed that layer of white, I'm using the dark green to tint that completed layer. So what I'm doing is from a distance, I'm just spraying lightly over all of the white areas just to tint them in that dark green color and to blend them in with the previous tone of flame. This will start to create that depth of layers. So now that I've completed the dark green, I'm switching back to white and I'm going to create another layer. So white being opaque, it's obviously going over the top of everything that I've done. However, I'm not building a totally solid layer. I'm still allowing some of the previous fire to shine through. So this as well is what's creating the depth. 
apologies for the compressor kicking in. So you can see I'm almost done now with this white layer. A little bit more detailing in this one um, as opposed to the previous. So you'll notice that as I'm uh, getting further along in the video, I am sharpening up my uh, layer of fire. That's also helping to create that sense of depth as in foreground, background. And again, just brightening up some of those areas where the fire would be heavier down in the um, hotter section of the flame. Now I'm actually using a fluoro green to coat this particular layer. So it's going to give it a lot more punch, a bit more brightness obviously being fluoro. So just from a distance as I did with the dark green earlier, I'm just uh, dusting over all of those white areas. If you don't have a fluoro green that you wish to use for this step, then any bright green will do just fine. So now that we've finished the fluoro green, now we're going back to our white and we're going to create another layer. Similar to before, but we are just sharpening up again on some of our brighter little highlights and also picking out our embers and stray sections of fire. It's okay if you start to create some extra flame licks that's fine you don't necessarily again have to follow what you've got underneath that's going to help to create multiple layers however you want to try and keep that flow of the flame consistent and that's probably the biggest key to doing real fire is to get that flow looking nice and natural like as if it's just flicking up that canvas Okay, so now I'm switching to Trident Lime. I'm gonna do the same as what I did previously with the other layers from a distance, uh, just over an airbrush length away. I am just dusting over those white sections and creating another layer. 
the beauty about the lime is that it's creating a bit more contrast so I'm really getting that sense of depth now Okay, so now we are back to white. And the airbrushes that I've been using for this piece have been the Iwata HPCS Eclipse with a 0.35 needle, as well as what I'm using right now, which is the CMC Plus Micron, also an Iwata airbrush. This has a 0.23 mil needle, I'll link up to these airbrushes and a few other things in the description below. And if this is your first time to the channel, we would love to have you as part of our community. So feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon and that will notify you every time we put out new content. So just continuing on with my white, trying to pick out my highlights and being careful not to overdo it with my template. So you want to make sure that you're using the template to get your sharp edge, but you don't want to overdo it. You'll generally notice that I tend to use the sharp edge first, usually one side. So I'll pick whichever side of the, uh, the ember or the lick that I'm doing and then I will taper off that with a bit of freehand airbrushing just to give it that softness and um, the sharper sort of wispy lines I tend to put them in just to create that flow. So now we're switching back to our fluoro green and I'm just going to dust back over that layer. Except this time I am trying to avoid spraying over the entire white sections. I'm kind of just uh, spraying over the majority of them and leaving some of the areas still uh, a bit more of that white showing through. So now that I've finished with my fluoro green, I've switched back to my dark green, which we used previously with a few of the other layers, the earlier layers. So I'm using that dark green now to push back some of the layers and get a bit more contrast. So by using this tone, it's going to knock some of that fire into the background and pop out the bits that I want to remain in the foreground. So essentially, this being a darker colour, this is my shadow colour. So now I am switching back to my white and I just want to re-highlight some of the areas and again bring a bit more of that layer to the foreground after just working with my dark green to knock some of the other areas back. And you can see by adding that dark green it's just giving me a bit more depth and I'm really getting that multi-layer thing happening now. Back with my Eclipse and the dark green and just some final pushbacks using my dark green shadow tone. And here you have the completed canvas. So the last thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to seal the artwork. 
by using a matte varnish. So let's go ahead and do that now. The matte varnish is not only going to protect my artwork, but it's also going to unify all my tones and it kind of also enriches some of the colors. So it's really, really good to use. The varnish that I like to use is the Helmer Crystal Coat. And uh, this is, as I said earlier, a matte varnish and it's just an aerosol. Give it a good shake and a few nice semi-wet coats will seal it all in. So there you have it. It's as easy as that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching and we will see you again very, very soon with another airbrush artwork project.